After 156 games, the Cubbies and Astros are tied atop the National League Central. And now it comes down to one week to determine the champ. Tonight, Carey looks to become the king of the Queen City when he slams the door shut on the Reds. Next. It's a beautiful day for a ball game at the Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati, Ohio. Just six games remain in the 2003 regular season, and Cubs fans are delighted with their standing with an 84 and 72 record at the start of play tonight. The Cubs find themselves in a first place tie with the Houston Astros. They'll be in action later on this evening at home against the Giants. It's the first of three for the Cubs tonight against the Cincinnati Reds here on Fox Sports Net Chicago. And hi again, everybody. Steve Stone, Chip Carey, great to be back in first place. Great to be with you again tonight for the opener of this three-game set. And Stoney, the Cubs finding it all coming together at a most opportune time. They hold their fate in their own hands for the first time in a long time. Sending Carey Wood to the mound is usually a real good thing, especially against these Reds. And when they know that San Francisco is playing Houston tough, it's added incentive. And the guys at the top tonight are going to hold one of the keys for the Cubs. That's Lofton and Gruzelanek. Lately, they've been terrific. If Lofton gets on, Gruzelanek can get them over and then the guys in the middle can drive them home. They want to get an early lead. They want to take the heart out of the Reds and hopefully they can do that tonight. Well, Aramis Ramirez is very excited. This is the first pennant race the young third baseman has been involved in and Stoney, he's been coming up big on this road trip. He hit the ball very well in Pittsburgh and he's tormented his former mates. Now, he's not a former Red, but hopefully tonight he can keep the hot streak going. This is a very lively ballpark and Aramis has tremendous power. Hopefully he'll be able to take care of Scott Randall tonight. You know, this is a guy that once won 18 straight games in the minor leagues. He's not overpowering, but he is crafty. Well, Kerry Wood is overpowering. A lifetime Stoney, nine victories against the Cincinnati Reds. He, too, would like to continue to this great run of starts in the month of September. I think Kerry Wood's going to have a big advantage. They don't see the ball well early, and Kerry Wood has a better breaking ball than Scott Randall. As you can see, Kerry lately has been close to unhittable. Randall's ERA is in the mid-sixes. Hopefully the Cubs can get off to a good start, then look to Houston, where San Francisco Francisco is playing pretty good baseball. So go Giants go and go Cubs go. They hold their fate in their own hands. It's game one of three. Then it's back home for the weekend in Chicago. And we'll take on the Pittsburgh Pirates back at beautiful Wrigley Field. But first things first, Dusty Baker and the Cubs got to take care of business tonight at the Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati, Ohio. Fox Sports Nets coverage of Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you in part by Aflac. Ask about it at work. Chevy. Test drive a new Chevy car or truck today at your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealer. Comcast. Proud to be Chicagoland's new cable company. Heineken. It's all about the beer. Heineken. Walgreens. The pharmacy of the Chicago Cubs. Geico Direct. A 15-minute phone call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey. Nobody makes whiskey like Jack Daniels. Penn's Oil. Not just oil, Penn's Oil. Your local area Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Mike's Hard Lemonade. A hard Mike's is good to find. And by SBC. Ordinary people, extraordinary job. New 2004 Pontiac Grand Prix with optional driver's package has aluminum wheels, wide track handling, and the largest V6 in its class. Chicagoland, it's a rush, hour after hour. And now get a 2004 Pontiac Grand Prix with driver's package for around $229 a month with smart buy financing. Residency restrictions apply. Call for details. This is not a lease. Own your Grand Prix today. See your Chicagoland Pontiac dealer. store on the dry cleaners. I think we've been in the car all day. Hard working engine.
engines need a hard-working oil. Introducing Pennzoil's SUV truck and minivan motor oil. Not just oil, Pennzoil. Get the Pennzoil Protection Package at Jiffy Lube and get $10 back on your next Pennzoil service. Frank Thomas and the Sox look to finish the year off strong as the Royals' loaded attack is sure to make it a fight to the finish. White Sox, Royals, Thursday at 6.30 on Fox Sports Net. Pro Football Weekly, Sundays at 9 on Fox Sports Net. It's a gorgeous night in Cincinnati, our first day of autumn, and we will have autumn-like weather by the time our game concludes tonight. Temperatures in the Cincinnati area should dip below the 50s, and the Cubs look to move into the mid-80s as far as winds are concerned. A victory tonight means number 85 on the year, and a chance for the Cubs to maintain their share of first place in the National League's Central Division. The Cubs 2-2 two and two so far on this road trip, and Dusty lines them up this way for the series opener against the homestanding Reds. Kenny Lofton leads off in center field, followed by Mark Grazzolanek. Moises Alou is in left. Sammy Sosa hits fourth in right field. Aramis Ramirez at third base. Randall Simon at first. Alex Gonzalez the shortstop with Damian Miller hitting eighth. And Kerry Wood on the mound, batting ninth. Scott Randall going to the mound for the Reds. He has a sinking fastball. He has a slider. It acts more like a slurve. It's not overpowering. Not, none of his stuff is overpowering. And yet he's a pretty big man. When you look out there, you see a guy 6'3", 225 pounds. He's 27 years old. There are the numbers this year. He did win 18 games between last year and this year in AAA. Anytime you do that at any level, you have to be pretty good. And he depends on keeping the hitter off balance. Again, that fastball probably tops out at 88 miles an hour. He'll pitch comfortably 85 or 86. And if he's right, he'll get a lot of ground balls. What's happened lately, Chip, is he hits the wall around the fifth or sixth inning, and that's when the Cubs can take advantage of him. They're hoping to jump on him early. That's when this Cub team has been their best, get a couple of early runs and make the starting pitching shut down the opposition and demoralize them early. But beware this Cincinnati ball club. They have played the role of the spoiler pretty well in their last series in Philadelphia. They took two of three from the Phillies. So bring your A game and get this one in the win column here tonight. Kenny Loft into work and Randall misses outside with ball one to the Cubs center fielder and leadoff man Kenny Lofton. Lofton at 291, 11 home runs and 43 runs batted in. One of the things that Randall can't afford to do is get behind. His stuff isn't good enough. If he gets behind, it's going to be a short night for him. Kenny bounces that ball past Hummel, who is in on the grass. And you hear the Cubs fans roar as Lofton now has a four-game hit streak. And here come the Cubs with Mark Rutzelonic batting second. you young players this is the advantage of at least showing butt every now and then you bring them in at the corners then it's easy to slap the ball by it loft had a pretty good lead not going and there's a strike call Sam Holbrook, our home plate umpire, with Paul Schreiber, Angel Hernandez, and Randy Marsh rounding out the umpiring crew here in Cincinnati tonight. Lofton with 30 steals and 39 tries. Hasn't been running a whole lot, Steve, since taking that awkward back bend back at Chicago. Well, this is not a good guy to run against in Jason LaRue, so if you do see him running, more than likely it's going to be the hit and run as the Cubs will try to stay out of the double play. That ball in the air right up the middle, dropped, and the Reds are going to have what? A force play. They're going to say the, the ball was caught and then dropped by second base umpire Angel Hernandez. So it's Grunzelanek who's retired on the pop out and Lofton still at first with one man down. I think the Cubs will take that trade if they have a choice between Grunzelanek and Lofton. They'd rather have Lofton. This one way inside. Grunzelanek forced to swing at it. 
right there he catches it. It looks like he's playing in a flip game with second baseman D'Angelo Jimenez. But Angel Hernandez calls him out. That's a big break. Here's Halu. Moises at 285 with 21 home runs. And that's off the plate. Ball one to the Cub left fielder. Kind of surprised Angel Hernandez made that call. There was no move by Almeida at short to go into the glove and pick out the baseball. It didn't look like he had any control. He was looking for the double play. Rosalenic was running, however. It wouldn't have been a double play. Often had to hold up to see if the ball was caught. He's still at first with one out. Dalu rolls that out of play. One ball, one strike. Man, this is a great time of year to be a Cub fan. They're in the race. They're tied for first. Six games left, including the final three starting Friday at home. It's a good time to be playing the Reds. And I know the everybody's dangerous line. The reality of it is the Reds are second last in hitting. They're second last in pitching. They're last in defense. It's a very young, not a very good baseball team. Everybody's dangerous, but you'd rather be playing them than the Giants. No question. One ball, one strike. Lofton again leading. Not going, and the pitch low and away. Ball two to Alu. You would have to think that you would just look for the ball inside. There's no doubt, being a sinker baller, that Randall's going to throw more fastballs into right-handers than he's going to throw away. I'm not sure if he can establish the outside corner with the fastball. I'd be looking for it inside if you get the breaking ball. If you're waiting back, you can always take that one. Outside corner evens the count at two and two. friendly ballpark here in Cincinnati as we saw earlier this season especially the left center field at 379 the ball just rockets out over that Ohio lottery sign popped up back goes Olmedo and he should have an easy play and he makes it and there's your second out we'll take a look at the defense and how they're going to line up behind Randall it's Branion Friel and Pena left to right with Hummel, Olmedo, Jimenez, and Casey in the infield. Pretty good defensive catcher, Jason LaRue, behind the plate. Now Ryan Friel can really go get him in center field. The only arm in the outfield belongs to Willie Mopena. He throws the ball very well in right. You'll run on Branion, you'll run on Friel. You have to be careful to run on Pena because he can get it to the base in a hurry. The Cubs are 15 and 6 in the month of September. Let's see if Sammy can get going here in the final week of the year. It has not been a very pleasant offensive month for Sosa, yet the team is still winning, and this is the team against whom he's done a lot of damage. This year, Sosa, a 356 batting average with five of his 36 home runs and 12 of his 97 RBIs against this Red Staff. Side corner, it's so and two. Sammy not liking the call of Sam Holbrook, but it puts him in a hole anyway. LaRue wants it outside. Randall gets it there. Sammy thought it might have been down. So he has to protect. No movement at first. And that's off the plate inside. One ball, two strikes. Another big game in the National League playoff race going on as we speak down in South Florida. The Phillies and the Marlins are starting a three-game set. Pretty Kevin Millwood and Don Trill Willis. It's a pretty good matchup in that one. Runner going this time, and Sammy pops it up right side. Long run, Willie Mo Pena. Out goes Casey. Pena comes on, takes over, and that'll retire the side. Lofton gets a leadoff hit. The Cubs pop out three times in succession. No score after a half inning in Cincinnati. Ron Santo, all Chicagoans admire him for his brilliant career at third base and is today's broadcast voice of the Cubs. No wonder he always draws a crowd. Can I have your autograph? What other reason could there be? They like my Chevy. Get 0% APR financing for qualified buyers on every 2003 Chevy Trailblazer or get $5,000 total cash back on every 2003 Trailblazer EXT. Mr. Santo, can I drive your Chevy? No. See your Chicago land and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers today. When it comes to number one rankings, history has a way of repeating itself. Zoom, 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 zoom. zoom. 
Test the best at your Mazda dealer now. And see why both the Mazda Protégé and Protégé 5 rank number one in car and driver comparison tests. Plus, get 0.0% APR financing for five full years or $22.50 cash back on the 2003 Mazda Protégé 5. Yeah, 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 yeah. Test the best at your Chicagoland Mazda dealer today. Easy, gang. Plenty of room. To make the ride of the game more comfortable, Chevy thought roomy Suburbans and Tahoes were just the ticket. Sit back and get comfortable. Now get $4,500 total cash back on every 2003 Chevy Tahoe. Or get $5,000 total cash back on every 2003 Chevy Suburban. Hurry, the selection won't last. Maybe this wasn't the best idea. Copy that. See your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealer today. Score after half inning. Kerry Wood to the mound. Here's the Reds lineup he'll face. Our first look at Ryan Friel. This kid's played a very good center field for Cincinnati. Tim Hummel at third base. D'Angelo Jimenez, the second baseman. Longtime Cup tormentor Sean Casey at first. Russell Branyan's been slumping of late. He's in left. Willie Mo Pena in right. Jason LaRue is the catcher. Ray Olmedo, the shortstop, and Randall pitches and hits ninth against Kerry Wood seeking his 14th win. Pretty impressive numbers, and this is 32nd start. He's completed four of them. You see the strikeouts at 254 in just 204 innings. Opponents hitting a minuscule 208. And he wants to keep Friel off base. He's got very good speed. More times than not, if you have any idea about how you're going to pitch to these Reds, if you keep the ball middle out, most of these Reds won't give you a great deal of difficulty. Visibility not good now. I don't think they're going to be able to adjust to the, the Woody Hard slider. The Cincinnati Reds offense leads the major leagues in most strikeouts. Kerry Wood atop the pile in the National League in most strikeouts earned. On the mound. So you figure if Wood has his A game, he's going to have a good night. So Friel can't get out of the way and he's hit on the hand or is that going to be called a foul ball Sam Holbrook is going to call a foul and there's a break that would have been the 22nd hit batsman by Kerry Wood this year instead it's a two strike count to Friel. Take another look at it and it looks like it hits the knob of the bat. I think that's a pretty good call on the part of Sam Holbrook. Otherwise, I think Ryan Friel would probably have a broken hand right now. So he's looking at it, and I know he could feel the vibration, but he didn't get hit on the hand. Grounded toward third. Ramirez to his left. Gobbles it up. And the throw to first in plenty of time to take care of Ryan Friel. One up, one down. Here's Hummel. Hummel played a pretty impressive third base for Cincinnati when we last saw the Reds at Wrigley Field. They got him from the White Sox in the deal for Scott Sullivan. I think he's going to be a pretty good swing man before it's all over. I'm not sure if he can play every day, but there'll be a lot of holes in Cincinnati. One of them will be a shortstop as Barry Larkin declined the offer by the Reds. And he will probably move elsewhere. And what do you make of that particular contract offer by John Allen as far as a half a million dollars to a guy who had been here 18 years? Well, a half million plus their incentives that would have gotten the contract apparently up to a million dollars. Now, Barry Larkin has been the face of the Cincinnati franchise. He's played his entire career here. But you have to say, in fairness, his skills have declined. He's been injured in each of the last three years, a period during which, Steve, he was paid $27 million. And the numbers just don't warrant that kind of money. I think he had a total in three years of something like 11 home runs. He played an average of 86 games a year. Barry Larkin's a terrific player, and he's been a great leader here. But I think there comes a time when you have to look in the mirror and say, do I still have the ability to play every day? I think he would like to end his career here. It doesn't appear that that's going to happen, but as we've heard many people say, nothing is etched in stone. You never know what's going to happen, but right now Larkin has rejected the offer. And we know you don't like being etched upon as that ball's rolled out of play. Two balls, Indeed. two strikes. But it is a real rarity in this sport nowadays, that in any sport, not just baseball, where a player can start and end his career 
with one team. And I think that what has disappointed so many fans in Cincinnati about the Larkin situation is that it came to this end this way. There will not be a Barry Larkin day. He rejected that. And he will, if he decides to play next year, says he wants to, in all likelihood, be in another uniform. The question is, how much bigger will the paycheck be outside of Cincinnati for Barry Larkin at his age and his skills? 39-year-old middle infielders. Not many. There's your first strikeout as Hummel goes down. Two up, two down for D'Angelo Jimenez. And here's where you got to be careful, I would imagine, Steve. A trio of left-hand hitters in the middle of this red order. We'll take a look at a high, tight fastball. That one thrown right by Hummel. I think the toughest out in this lineup is going to be D'Angelo Jimenez. He is a switch hitter. He's been a better hitter from the left side. At 317 is a left-hand hitter. And 303 overall. Ball from Kerry Wood. As we play here in our first inning, they've completed one in Florida. No score. Marlins and Phillies. That one down the left field line and out of play. Cubs would like to get as many innings as they can in early. And the reason is you can't see all that well. So with Kerry Wood dominating, if you can get three before the lights take hold, you should be in pretty good shape. This Wood stuff is going to be a lot better than his counterpart, Scott Randall. And a great night to pitch, you'd think. The weather, delightful. That's refreshing if you aren't tired, and most of the guys are right now. Two and two now to D'Angelo Jimenez. If you can't get psyched up, in a tie with six games to go, and you said it right before the game, what was a marathon now is a flat-out sprint. And the Cubs have their destiny in their own hands. If they win them all, and they go to 163, it'll be in Wrigley Field. And it'll be against the Astros. And if the Cubs win out, there is no way they can't win the division. That's right. The Cubs did win the coin flip with Houston if there is a playoff game. And that's still a big if. The Cubs would host it in Chicago at a time yet to be determined. 3-2 pitch. Is outside and Wood loses Jimenez. And he's aboard with two outs. Of course, our attention will turn to Houston a little bit later on. The Giants will battle them in game two. And Jeff Bagwell said what we've said. That's really true. Whoever plays best over 162 games and now over the last six is going to win the Central Division. And Billy Wagner said it all. He said, I gave up three. I've got to pitch better than that. You can't give up three runs in the middle of a pennant race. He gave up three late. First time he'd been scored on in quite some time. It was back-to-back -back home runs. You don't see that very often against Billy Wagner, but it put the Cubs into a tie. Here's Casey, and he looks at a bell high strike. How dominating was Billy Wagner? Since July 1st, prior to last night, he'd given up one earned run. Sounds like Eric Gagne, who saved 53 straight for the 125 ERA. Yeah, 53 it, straight amazing. games. Just amazing. Balls and a strike to Casey with two outs. Big hammer in for strike two. Casey's a real good hitter, and normally he hits the ball exactly where it's pitched. If you get it out over the plate, he'll take it right back up the middle, so Kerry Wood has to be careful, and that's why Gonzalez is playing up the middle. Ramirez well wide of the bag at third, and they're bunching him to center. The 0-2. Right to Ramirez, had him played perfectly, and the throw to second is off target. He had all kinds of time to make the throw to first, where Casey does not run well. Instead, he rolled the dice, and Aramis Ramirez opens the door here with E5 in our bottom of the first. We talked about the positioning defensively, and he's in a perfect spot. He can throw it anywhere and get it out. He throws it well wide of the bag. This has got to go E5. 31st error for Ramirez on the year. His eighth in 58 games since coming to the Cubs. So here's Branion, 0 for his last 13. Digging in. Ball outside from Wood. One ball, no strikes. High fastballs to Branion is the key. He's just one for eight against Kerry Wood with three strikeouts. He's got tremendous power, and he also has a whole lot of holes in what is an uppercut swing. First and second are the Reds runners. And there is the breaking ball. Branion couldn't resist.
good sized crowd a huge contingent of them from Chicago wearing Cubs colors in this home of the Cincinnati Reds. We'd love to see you here tomorrow and Thursday nights if you can get to town. Lots of tickets available as you see. And as we like to say of David Kaplan of WGN Radio, there's plenty of room to get on the bandwagon. And still a little time left. Willie Mopeno waits on deck. Let's worry about him in the second. A walk, a fielder's choice, and E5 puts two on with two out the spot high fastball you'll throw it right by Brannion and he'll go down on strikes for the tenth time in the last 14 at bats. It's a different set of signs with a man out at second base. Here's the 2 2 breaking ball throws him. What a pitch. No runs no hits one air two left Wood with a couple of strikeouts in a scoreless bottom of the first. Just announced for the first time ever now at your local Ford store. Zero interest, zero down, no payments until 2004. Get 0% financing for 72 months on every 2003 Explorer four door, Expedition, Focus, CX2, Ranger, and Taurus. That's interest free financing for 72 months on all of these best selling Fords. 0% for 72 months. Zero interest, zero down, no payments until 2004. Only until September 30th, now at your local Ford store of ordinary disposable razors, but now there's new Sensor 3 from Gillette. Totally new handle, three blades on springs that adjust to your face. No disposable shapes better. It could be the best disposable you ever threw away. New Gillette Sensor 3. Frank Thomas and the Sox look to finish the year off strong as the Royals' loaded attack is sure to make it a fight to the finish. White Sox, Royals, Thursday at 6.30 on Fox Sports Net. Hey, what is it? I realize I love you, but as long as you're with Jessica, there can never be anything between Listen, us. Listen, Cassie, there's no need to cry. Besides, I've got really great news. You're leaving Jessica? No. I just saved a load of money on my car insurance by switching to Geico. I saved. I thought that meant something to you. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Larry Roche has hit another home run with great super summer sale deals at both new Volkswagen Superstores on brand new 2003 New Beetle Convertibles and brand new 2003 Volkswagen Jetta GLS at the two new Larry Roche Volkswagen Superstores on Grand Avenue in Bensonville and 159th Street in Orland Park. Thomas Ramirez leads off our second inning and takes a sinking strike from Scott Randall. No score here in Cincinnati's great American ballpark. And that ball jammed Ramirez and skied into center field. Freel, a real good play. They think he's a lot like Rex Hudler, the way he plays the game and his versatility as well, Steve. Well, he made a real good play here. This is an inside-out swing, and again, Randall went inside on Ramirez. Frio comes flashing across, making the play. They love his speed. He's very aggressive on the base paths. I'm not quite sure if he's going to hit consistently, but he plays a terrific center field, and he can go get him alley to alley. Randall Simon. Jumps on the first pitch, and that's rolled out of play for a strike. Talking with Chris Welch, he said Randall Simon, for whatever reason, has just crushed the Reds. And it doesn't matter what uniform he's wearing, so it should be interesting tonight. Randall, 8 for 20. Two homers, six RBIs against Cincinnati. That's a 400 batting average. Overall, hitting 273 on the season. Defensively, they play him exactly like the Cubs play Casey. With Hummel well off the line, and Almeida up the middle. Yeah, they're daring him to hit the ball down the third base line. I mean, that's the same defense that they use against Sean Casey, and it worked. He hit it right at Ramirez. And it 
Works for Cincinnati as Hummel in perfect position. Two quick outs here in the second. Not too many secrets, or at least there shouldn't be this time of year. You've only got six games left. You ought to know what the other guys are going to do pretty consistently. And it's interesting how they keep the charts because guys will hit the ball differently in the infield than they will in the outfield. There's some guys they play as opposite field hitters in the infield. They'll play them as straightaway hitters or pull hitters in the outfield. And that goes with the charts that they keep on ground balls and fly balls, and the hitter can be two different things. Alex Gonzalez takes a strike, former Cub coach. Renee Latchman used to keep just incredibly detailed charts on every batted ball for every major league player the Cubs faced. Well, you have to do that because if you face them enough, they will fall into a pattern. They'll hit a certain pitch in a certain place more times than not. With Alex, they're playing him as a dead pull hitter. And you can understand why. Most likely, when Randall goes with the fastball, he's going to come inside off the plate. And if Gonzalez hits it, he'll yank it foul. Missed the outside corner. It's even at two and two. the middle. Olmedo at short. Diving play behind the bag. Casey Dixon out at first. Good play at both ends. And the Cubs are retired in order in the top half of the second. The powerful Nissan Altima, with a special lease price of just $219 a month. Imagine how good it'll look in your driveway. The stylish Nissan Altima, now $219 a month. The only love I have in my life. Jay! So don't tell me who to love. You have no idea how I feel. Yeah. Can I get my grown man on for one? Because I see some ladies tonight that should be hanging with Jay. Jay said. Jay said. Excuse me, miss. What's your name? Can you come and hang with me? I told him I was leaving. application with 80% less paperwork from Bank of America. Short enough to do anytime. I'm thirsty. Bank of America, higher standards. show that takes you inside the world of extreme sports each and every weekday. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Weekdays on Fox Sports Net. Tomorrow, the battle for first in the National League Central continues right here in Cincinnati. Same team, same time. It appears it'll be Sean Estes against Josh Hall. We'll be on the air with the pregame show at 5.30. Game time, 6 o'clock here on Fox Sports Net. Chicago. Bottom of the second inning, and Willie Mopena to face Kerry Woods scoreless game. Willie Mopena cannot hit the ball on the outer portion of the plate. He'll try to inside out inside pitches. He's still a very young, very strong hitter. Now he can hit some high fastballs. If they're inside, he'll take them to right and right center. But away he pulls off everything. It looks to me like he's looking for everything in. He walks begrudgingly, nine of them at 146 at bats. And he's got and 49 no, strikeouts. At the he's same got time. no chance against that one. Zippo, strikeout number three. As you see, the Phillies have taken a two to nothing lead over the Marlins. That game's in the second. Kevin Millwood and Dontrell Willis in the opening game of that three game series. Two to Pena playing right tonight for Cincinnati. See you later. Woods third strikeout. Well, 
ideally the Cubs would love to see Philadelphia beat Florida. Because the Cubs are a game in back of the Phillies, two games in back of Florida. That high fastball on the outer portion mystifies Pena as he goes down on strikes. Yeah, that wild card race, real interesting. The Phillies are in Florida for three. Then they go home to play the Braves while the Marlins host the Mets for the final three games of the year. I'd like to see a Philly sweep, to be honest with you. Because the Braves have to have the hammer down. They're playing for home field advantage. Same story for San Francisco. And that's why they're going to probably play a couple of real good games against Houston. They've got the right guys pitching, although Jason Schmidt has had all kinds of problems against the Astros. One and oh to Jason LaRue. The Giants, though, have won 12 of their last 13 games played at Minute Maid Park. An astounding 12 and 1 are the Giants. Smith yeah. 2 and 9 against the Houston, so we have to hope that he does real well tonight. As we said, Cubs just got to take care of their own business and maintain the share of first and see what San Francisco and Houston do. In about 25 minutes or so, Jason LaRue came out of the first game of that series in Chicago with back spasms, but he's able to go here tonight. 16 homers for him. He's driven in 50. The Cubs have the right guy going to the mound. Kerry Wood is 9 and 2 lifetime with a 250 ERA, and this is 15th start against the Reds. and fires the 2 2. LaRue out of the Don Baylor mold of hitters. He's been hit 20 times by a pitched baseball this year. That ties the Cincinnati single season record held by Frank Robinson. And he will take a base on ball. Second walk for Wood in as many innings. And here's Olmedo, the shortstop. Olmedo's a switch hitter who's much better from the left side, hitting 262 as opposed to 220 as a right hand hitter. Doesn't have much power from either side of the plate, but they like what he can do at shortstop. He'll probably get an opportunity to show what he can do because Barry Larkin won't be back. Hey. So Renner at first, one out for the number eight hitter, Ray Olmedo, the shortstop. He's driven in 15 men. And that splits the plate for a strike. Montreal's in Atlanta tonight. Big game for the Braves. As you see the fine effort defensively by Olmedo a moment ago. And a better effort by Sean Casey at first. The one strike pitch. Catches the outside edge. Moises Alou is fairly deep in left field. That's the one thing you have to be aware of. Number one, the visibility isn't great. They're going to have to point in the air if a ball is hit that way. And if Almeida goes to left field, it's going to be a flare. High chop. Ramirez will go to first. Runner to second. Two outs for Randall, the pitcher. Had a great year with the bat. He's batting a thousand. He's one for one. I'm thinking that his average will plummet 500 points after this at bat. Yeah, that's a, the only bad thing about starting the year with a hit your first at bat. It's all downhill from that point. It's true. So Randall digs in. Runner at second in the second for Cincinnati. We have no score yet. Took a pretty good healthy cut. Usually when you see that, he's looking first ball fastball, which most pitchers will do. I would think any type of slider or curveball would handle him pretty easily. Oh, and two. Randall, as you said, a big man from Fullerton, California. We'll tell you about his travels through baseball when he takes them on next inning. He's been around. And he goes around and misses that ball. And the throw will be made to first, and that'll retire the side. Kerry Wood with a pair of strikeouts in each of his first two innings of work. We remain scoreless.
The Hyundai Sonata, a comparison. More standard features than a Toyota Camry LE, including a V6 engine. And yet the Sonata costs $2,100 less when comparably equipped. Add in America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles, and you win. Test drive the Hyundai Sonata starting at just $14,839 at your Hyundai dealer. Hurry into the Hyundai winning season clearance and get up to $2,000 cash back or 0% APR for up to 60 months. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Chicago Cubs and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of the Chicago Cubs. Sierra Extended Cab with more standard V8 horsepower than the new Ford F-150. Try as they might, they still can't catch us. Professional grade engineering. It's not more than you need, just more than you're used to. My name's Raj. Uh, I design software. You must be a model. We were wondering if the two of you would possibly... Interactive program guide. Find what you want, when you want it. Another way Comcast Digital Cable makes life a little cooler. Well, I think uh, playing for Dusty is uh, amazing because he keeps everybody so relaxed and uh, he keeps everybody in the game. Uh, even if you're not a, on a, in the starting lineup, you know you know sooner or later you're gonna uh, get to play either either one at bat or one inning. And uh, you know he's great. He brings a great uh, attitude to the team, and I think that's that's the way a manager should manage. So here we go to our third inning of play with Miller, Wood, and Kenny Lofton coming up. And for Ramon, he made it within one game of a world championship last year with San Francisco. Dusty's thought enough of him to tell Jim Henry, look, this is a quality player who's going to only give you a whole lot better than you've had off the bench. Go get him. He's been wonderful this year. Indeed he has as Miller takes a ball off the plate. We want to welcome our affiliate Inside Communications and their viewers in Champaign, Illinois, to Cincinnati, Ohio in game one of the series. I would think if Randall would stay inside on Damian Miller, this would be a guy that he could handle because he can shoot that ball to right center pretty well. Remember, Friel does have pretty good speed. off the plate from the well-traveled Scott Randall. Russell Branding in left and he fancies himself a third baseman by trade. He had arm surgery last year and it's not real strong. Why did Randall get a look? Last year in 15 starts with Edmonton at AAA he ran the table. He went 12 and 0. Then won another six this year. 18 straight in the minor leagues. And he started a fairly long time ago. He was selected by the Rockies in the 11th round of June 1995 draft, acquired by the Twins, claimed off waivers by the Rangers, signed by the Rockies as a free agent, signed by the Twins as a free agent, signed by the Reds as a free agent. And he's retired seven straight men after the Kenny Lofton leadoff hit. And through all of those twists and turns and myriad of paperwork, he's still just 27 years old. That's where the Reds are looking for help in their starting rotation for next season. They've had all kinds of pitching problems this year. And they are still looking for, as are many teams, in fairness to the Reds, that dominant number one guy at the top of the rotation who can eat innings and be a presence for them in the number one slot. This is the kind of pitcher that other pitchers hit better because he doesn't overswing on the curveball or sinker. Gary Wood. Falling behind some of his mates in the hitting department, looking for a base hit. Pretty good rip at that one, but he came up empty. One ball, two strikes. Now the visibility is starting to get a whole lot better here, and I know it's the bottom part of the order, but the second time through, they should have some better at-bats. 
Sharply hit to the shortstop. Almedo corrals it. Casey off the bag, recovers the pillow in time. And it's eight up, eight down. The ball was hit awfully hard. Unfortunately, it was hit right at Ray Almedo, and he was able to, on the one hop, stay in front of it and make the play. Well, kids, enter to create your favorite MLB team website contest. Your class could win tickets for a 2004 Cubs game. The contest is open to Illinois students in grades four, five, and six. Log on to Cubs.com for official rules and details. There you see the upcoming weekend set against the Pittsburgh Pirates. It's Fan Appreciation Weekend, and we'll retire Ron Santos number 10 on what we hope will be a glorious Sunday afternoon. Kenny Lofton, the only Cub to reach. That was a single past Hummel, who's in on the grass again at third base. Well, defensively, they play him in on the grass at third. Now with two strikes, they'll back up. They play him back at first because the charts say that if Kenny does bunt, he pushes it to third. He doesn't drag it with him. That's right down the middle, Lofton backing away. And it's nine up, nine down for Randall. And that ends the top of the third. Kenny argues, be careful, Kenny. Need you to stay in the game. We have no score. Small businesses may not expect the worst, but that doesn't stop them from preparing for it. On site or online. Introducing SBC Yahoo DSL Business Edition. High-speed access that's more secure, thanks to antivirus and firewall protection. Just $29.95 a month, guaranteed. Seeing small business differently. SBC. Madre de Dios, where civilization ends, and you can enjoy solitude like no other place on Earth. Because Madre de Dios is uninhabitable. tough enough to drive a Tacoma? Yeah! Hey, we're new in town. We followed some friends up and came to work for Joe's Crab Shack. Let's go, Gus! Show them what you got! You know where this Joe's Crab Shack is? Head to Joe's Crab Shack and enjoy steak and fried shrimp for only $10.99. Tender, juicy, top sirloin steak grilled to perfection. Served with your choice of coconut or fried shrimp for only $10.99. Skits, insightful interviews, and sharp locker room banner. Tonight, Peyton and Archie Manning will talk NFL football right after the Fifth Third Bank Cubs post here on Fox Sports. Now, time for the Reds order coming up. Have to watch the bunt from Friel. He's got terrific speed. He bounced out to third, his first time up. We get a moment. We're going to take a look at that last pitch that Kenny Lofton thought Sam Holbrook might have missed. Off the plate inside to Friel. 2 0 your count. Now, Kenny backs out of the way of a pitch that's on the outside corner. I'm not sure how you convinced the umpire that that was inside, but he didn't convince Sam Holbrook. 2 0. Oh, that's right through there. Two balls. One strike. This is the one guy you want to keep off base. He's got real good speed and he consistently runs. He will be the running attack for these Reds. They don't run often. Carey falls behind his man. Three balls and a strike. Creel has swiped nine bases, been caught three times. Foul. Full count to Friel, three and two, a man whom you do not figure to be the opening day center fielder for the Reds in 2004. Their 
hoping Ken Griffey Jr. obviously will come back at 100 percent and more importantly for the Reds stay healthy all year. Feels going to be a pretty good swing man I believe before it's over. Payoff pitch. Rip foul past Ray Knights. He was thinking about making a play. He was a terrific player in his day. Three and two the count. He's the MVP of the 1986 World Series. And then with the New York Mets, went on to the Baltimore Orioles after that season. And a terrific guy. He's done just about everything in this game. 3 2. Got his man. Gary Wood has his fifth strikeout. Trouble spot in the batting order, and that's the succession of left handers, of which Friel is not one. Good fastball, outer third of the plate. You've got Hummel, another right hander, and then you get to the Jimenez Casey part of the batting order. Those two are the toughest. There's the butt try. It's a mile high in the air, and Ramirez wisely lets it roll foul. Well, Hummel had a couple of choices here. He could take that one in the head. <laughs> Or defend himself with a butt. Now it's a good idea, but the pitch wasn't in a spot he needed it. And he backed out of the way and popped it up. This is good. That's self defense. And fortunately for the Cubs, after a slip out of the batter's box, that one just drifts into foul territory. So Hummel will gather himself. Shake out the cobwebs and dig back in. He whiffed his first time up. A 97 right at your head is not real comfortable. That's line foul down the right side. We had dinner last night with our dear friends Eddie and Patty Shepard. Ron Santo celebrating the retirement of his jersey. By the way, we encourage you to get to the ballpark early. Around 1240 or so for that Sunday game. Make sure everybody can get in in time for the ceremony to take place. Well, we met up with a man who was behind the plate when someone was throwing the ball around your head at 97 miles an hour in the All-Star game. It was game. indeed. And it was very nice of Johnny Bench to stop by. He wanted to say hello to Ron Santo and congratulate him on having his number retired. Of course, Johnny Bench, a Hall of Famer. And he was reminiscing with Ronnie and a few of the on, things in the old days. Told some great stories about Ron Santo. One in particular about when he first came up, Johnny Bench waved the right fielder over toward the line, going, this guy can't get around on the ball. Ronnie didn't like that very much, but he did hit it right at the right fielder. 2-2 pitch is rolled slowly toward short. Alex in, up, and across. However, there is a good cub ending to this story. It was Freddie Norman on the mound who threw a screwball. The next time up, Johnny Bench stood up and did the same thing, moved the right fielder over toward the line, and Ronnie, who was a dead pull hitter, was incensed. Freddie Norman hung a screwball and Johnny Bench 10 feet from home plate yelled oh no Ronnie hit it out of the ballpark screaming at Bench all the way around. Yeah I got your right fielder pal. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Ronnie got the last laugh in that one. Here's Jimenez who walked and took second on E5. Reds still looking for their first base hit tonight. This is the one guy that worries me in the lineup. Good switch hitter. Flashed out of play by Jimenez. One and two, your count. Let's see if Woody goes back to that good breaking ball low and in. He said. Everything pretty much his own way. He's either walked them or fanned them. But nobody's hit it out of the infield. Right down the middle. Kerry Wood is throwing a special game tonight. Six strikeouts through three innings of play. No score. We're going to drive on down the road. All I want to do is drive. There's a lot of
of things to see in life, and you can trust Discount Tire Company to take you there. They carry the world's best brands like Michelin, BF Goodrich, and Uniroyal, and their quality of service shows why customer satisfaction is still number one. So come drive through life with Discount Tire Company. All I want to do is drive. Discount Tire Company, let's drive. Come on in, Derek. I thought we'd discuss this thing and had it all worked out. You're our starting shortstop. How can you possibly afford to spend two nights dancing, two nights eating out, and three nights just carousing with your friends? Oh. If you want to enjoy the New York nightlife, bring your Visa card. Because Orso, Cheetah, and the Broom Street Bar don't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. vehicles from Lexus. They not only answer the call of the wild, they also answer the call of the civilized. See your Chicago area Lexus dealer. Hockey returns. Sullivan leads the Blackhawks. Kachuk powers the Blues. It is on Hawks News, Saturday at 7 on Fox Sports Net. Here we go to the fourth Fox. inning. And a very enthusiastic duck in the middle of a pennant race. Against which team does Kerry Wood have the most career strikeouts? We will have our answer for you in the bottom half of the fourth inning and hopefully, Steve, a cub lead here in Cincinnati. I will tell you, I'm thinking it was one of his high school teams in Texas. He faced them a lot, and he probably fanned more of them than any other team. Well, I'm going to guess the Houston Astros. He had 20 in one game, after all. He did indeed. But you're assuming that it's only a major league team. True. The graphic and question did not specify what level of competition. It was just a touch of ambiguity. Answer. One ball, one strike to Grudzelanek in a scoreless game. And that's cut on and missed. Mark popped out to the shortstop on that odd play in the first inning with Lofton aboard. Now we'll see if the Cubs are seeing the ball a little bit better right now. Give some credit to Randall. He's throwing well and he's keeping the ball down. But this is the second time through the order. The Cubs should have better luck. Swing and a high fly ball driven deep toward left field. Back goes Branion on the track, and he's got it for the first out. Russell hit that ball awfully hard, making a bid for his fourth home run of the year. Unfortunately, Russell Branion was able to run back under that. The ball will hang up a little more at nighttime. There's a crispness in the air, and Russell just missed it. He hits this one awfully hard. On the track, Russell Branion holds it in. So here is Moises Alou. He too popped out. And ten straight cups have been retired by Randall. Two. And so far, Stoney, Randall's kept the Cubs hitters off balance here in the first three and a third innings. This is his first start in the major leagues this year. Philadelphia adding to their lead. There's another shot to left. Branion on the run in the corner. He's got that one. Two down. Well, the Cubs are seeing the ball a whole lot better, but so far they haven't been able to fool Russell Branion. It's 328 down the line in left field as Branion playing just deep enough. Amber to haul that one in. Two up, two out, but the Cubs starting to hit the ball a whole lot better as Randall keeping everything in, and he hasn't fooled the Cubs this inning. So let's see if Sosa can get one over that yellow line in left. 11 up, 11 down here in the fourth inning. And that's a ball off the plate to Sammy Sosa. Kenny Lofton has the game's only hit to this point. Two and 
on your count. Well, so far, Randall, who throws low three quarters with the fastball, is tipping off every curveball because he stays over the top with it. Bounce toward third on a big hop. Hummel's got it. And the toss across in time to retire the side. Twelve straight Cub hitters have been retired. We remain scoreless in the middle of the fourth. Not too close. What do you think? I got that insurance? What insurance is that, Yogi? The one you really need to have. If you don't have it, that's why you need it. Need what? I fly. Well, if you get hurt and miss work, it won't hurt to miss work. Uh -huh. And they give you cash, which is just as good as money. He's in a grove. Aflac. Ask about it at work. Uh -huh. I Local Starmark certified pre owned Mercedes Benz dealer for details on select C, E, M, and S class models. Comcast is working hard, so you won't miss a moment. We're working hard to bring you crystal clear pictures with digital cable. We're working hard to bring you high speed cable internet. And at Comcast, our promise is to continue bringing new technologies home to you first, to keep you in touch, informed, and in sync with everything you need to stay connected now and in the future all from one single source comcast introducing new body wash from old spice put my love to the test it has a dual action formula so you'll get really clean smell really great hey then need help with your anatomy homework Mr. new body wash from old spice here we go to the bottom of the fourth inning Time for our Aflac trivia question. Against which Major League team does Kerry Wood have the most career strikeouts? It is a National League Central foe, and the answer is the Cincinnati, Cincinnati Reds. Oh, nine and two lifetime record, and he's fanned a whole lot of Reds during the course of his young career. Milwaukee second. And it goes down from there. And he's got six so far tonight. And Casey, the first hitter to face him, grounds the first pitch toward first. Randall Simon, good play. One pitch, one out. Well, knowing who's going down the line really helps because Sean Casey does a lot of things well, but running is not one of them. So Randall Simon had plenty of time as Gary Wood keeps rolling right along. Now, Stoney, when we're home, I know you, like I, religiously listen to WGN Radio and the John Williams program. Indeed. He had a great idea. And that was to reverse the curse of the Billy Goat. And how did he go about doing that? Well, he queried. He also asked as a Brannion looks at a ball outside. Well, David Kaplan also got involved in the fun. But Jim Comiskey, David Townsend, and Bill Miller, three very enthusiastic Cub fans, bought four tickets to the Astros Giants game last night. Four tickets, meaning three of them and they bought a billy goat like easy to do the Cianis did in the 1945 World Series wanted to bring the billy goat into Minute Maid Park they had a ticket for the goat now we come to the ballpark with a goat every day Ron Sato indeed but, but that's a different curse but that's beside the point the thinking being they take the billy goat to the ball game the Astros deny the billy goat admission which they did oh they fell right into that and then one, Jim they? Comiskey David Townsend and Bill Miller then said the Astros will never win a playoff game or any other game for that matter and last night look what happened well that's proof that they're 0 one son's goat and without one too it's true so uh, Jim David Bill Hope that continues to work. In the meantime, there's one hit between these two teams, and the Cubs have it. Not much offense early in this one. So Brandon appears to be a strikeout in waiting because he's got a few different spots with which to miss one. Last time he was frozen on a curve. Here's another one, Russ. Yeah, the dirt could pick up. Full count. 
to the Reds left fielder Russell Brandon. He came up with the Cleveland Indians like so many did. Sean Casey, another member. Richie Sexton, Brian Giles, and on and on as far as prolific power haters. That one passed Jose Cardinal in foul ground. Jose, the always affable first base coach for the Cincinnati Reds. Former Cub and former a lot of teams. Now makes a home in that first base coach's box, except when Brandon is up and then he's well up the line. Line out of play again. Let's see if Damian Miller decides to end this with a curveball. Branion at seven wood strikeouts through three and two thirds. It wasn't one of Carey's better breaking balls, but it certainly was effective. And he's got him on the breaking ball twice. Two up, two down. Here's Pena. Pena struck out swinging his first time up. in one. Got to get carry some runs the way he's throwing the ball here tonight. And maybe get him some run the way he's throwing tonight. I don't think it'll be Willie Moe that's going to break this up anytime soon, especially if he stays where he is with that good hard breaking ball. the one he was looking for is that one low and out of the zone. Good rip. Be careful with the fastball with Pena who is pretty strong. He doesn't hit the curve or slider. You can take your pick. Last year, just 18 at bats with the Reds. This year, getting a few more opportunities. One and two. It's even at two balls, two strikes. The outfield just crumbled for the Reds. Looked like a pretty good one with Griffey starting out very well. Kearns and Dunn in the outfield. Very productive outfield, but. They lost them all to injury. I really thought that had they been able to stay together offensively and add a little pitching, they would have been a threat in the second half of the season. But the only threat is Kerry Woods' golden right arm tonight. He has struck out eight men in four innings of work, and we are still scoreless. There's a state where there's fun around every corner, where all cars are turbocharged, and there's a direct link between the right foot and a smile. Maybe that's why people who test drive a saw usually buy one. This is the state of independence. Welcome. Get attractive year-end pricing on a 2003 Saab 93 linear sports sedan, now available for as low as $299 a month. Can I get another chicken? You like dial-up? Imagine if everything just suddenly quit. Right, that's it. I quit. Unlike dial-up, Comcast high-speed internet doesn't just quit because it's always on. Best of all, it's now available at a dial-up price. Voila, bon appetit. Um, waiter. Great people, great products, great deal. This is Ron Westfall Chevrolet, and with 500 new and used vehicles to choose from, we're your Chevy dealership. Ron Westfall's got it all during our fall festival of savings, including 0% financing on every new 2003 Chevrolet, or rebates from $2,000 to $6,400. They've got to go, so we're slashing prices. Ron Westfall Chevrolet will be there on the corner of Route 30 and Route 34, where Aurora meets Oswego. Come on in and get your car. Two on weekdays on Fox Sports Net. 
Welcome to this Pontiac in-game update. I'm Gail Fesh Fisher inside the Fox Sports Net newsroom. Let's take a look at the two games of most importance to the Cubs. The wild card race for starters. The Phillies have jumped on four to early. Rollins with two RBI. Jim Tomey with an RBI to make it three to nothing top of the fourth. As for Houston, it is scoreless in the first. It's Wade Miller and Jason Schmidt on the mound, and we'll keep you posted on the action in Houston. But first, let's send it back to the action in Cincinnati. All right, Gail, thank you very much. On we go to the fifth already. Why are we breezing along so quickly? Well, just one hit. That was from the first man to step into the batter's box, Kenny Lofton, tonight. The Cubs hit the ball a little bit better in that fourth inning, and let's hope that continues here. Swing and a drive. Belt to deep left field, and the Cubs are on the board. Randall hung a curveball, and you can't do that right now to Aramis Ramirez. Who hit the ball consistently out of the park in Pittsburgh? It's now 27 and 103 in the power numbers, and the Cubs up a run. Aramis got a hanger, and he banged it into the second deck of the bleachers at the Great American Ballpark. And the Cubs have scored first. Here's Randall Simon. He's rounded out to third tonight. Four home runs on the road trip for Aramis Ramirez. That one flared into left. Russell Brannion comes in. One man down. This was a no-doubter. You see Jason LaRue sitting low and away. Randall hung it, and it went a mile into the second deck. Kerry Wood, the way he's throwing tonight, one run just might be enough. Let's get a few more and make it a moot point. Alex robbed it short by Almeida. And he hits it over his head, into left. Brannion's been busy, but another line drive out for the second of the inning. Gums continue to hit the ball better and better against Randall, and remember, this is first start of this season in the major leagues. They're a little concerned that that stuff might be short as they move along. So we'll see how patient Dave Miley is. He's only given up two hits. He's only losing one to nothing. But the Cubs are starting to hit the ball right on the nose. Here's Miller. Damien struck out his first and only time tonight. They're underway in Houston. Wade Miller on the mound. Works a scoreless first. Jason Schmidt to the slab against Houston now. Ball two to Damian Miller. Philly still lead Florida 3 0 in the fourth. Mets in front of the Pirates 1 0 in the fifth. No score Atlanta Montreal in the third. St. Louis in Milwaukee. No score in the first. toward Olmedo. Easy bounce. Perfect throw. Aramis Ramirez leads off the fifth inning with a mammoth home run. His solo shot is the game's only run to this point. Cubs one. Cincinnati nothing. The Hyundai Santa Fe. A comparison. More standard features than a Ford Escape XLS. All for over $1,300 less when comfortably equipped. And only the Santa Fe is protected by America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. Looks like we have a winner. Test drive the Hyundai Santa Fe nicely equipped for just $17,634 at your Hyundai dealer. Hurry into the Hyundai winning season clearance and get $1,000 cash back or 0% APR through September 30th.
I've been to the video store and the dry cleaners. I think we've been in the car all day. Hardworking engines need a hardworking oil. Introducing Pennzoil's SUV, truck, and minivan motor oil. Not just oil, Pennzoil. Get the Pennzoil Protection Package at Jiffy Lube and get $10 back on your next Pennzoil service. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you in part by Toyota. Get the feeling. Corona Extra, miles away from the ordinary. And by your Chicagoland Ford stores. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. Well, the fun squad here at the ballpark shooting hot dogs into the crowd. And Aramis Ramirez shoots a long home run ball into the night into left field for an early 1-0 lead. And to carry Wood through four innings, eight strikeouts, and nary a base hit allowed. Boy, do I feel like playing to a higher standard. It's about time. It's getting serious. <laughs> and since the All-Star break, the Cubs have pulled into a tie with Houston. They're a game and a half better than the Strohs at this point. In fact, the Cubs, in the month of September, only the Minnesota Twins have a better record in all of baseball. And, Steve, that was always a tendency of Dusty Baker's teams with the Giants. They got better after the break. Well, this year, no exception. So put to work. And a blazing fastball to Jason LaRue for a strike. It's so too early to tell you that David Kaplan, before the game tonight, before the game, predicted that Kerry Wood would throw a no-hitter. No, it's not too late. He did say that, though. He did indeed. And... Uh, this one on record. He felt that Kerry Wood was saving his best for tonight here in Cincinnati. And if that's the case, if he just wins this one, he couldn't have picked a better time as far as the Cubs are concerned. LaRue well, lays off. And we congratulate Harriet Brown from Rockford. She was our Toyota fan of the game in the top of the fifth, and she's a winner as Ramirez rewards her with. Fox Sports Net Toyota's prize package, including a hat and T-shirt, with that solo home run, to put the Cubs in front. I would think they would reward her with a Toyota for that towering home run. Larue is down. That's nine strikeouts and three in a row for Kerry Wood. He came in, Stoney, needing 20 strikeouts to tie Fergie Jenkins for the Cubs' single-season strikeout record. Although he might not get it this evening, he will get it before the year is over because he does have one more start left. High heat throws it right by LaRue, and Kerry Wood is throwing a gem here tonight. Here's Olmedo. He made contact and rolled out to third. There's only one problem with a big strikeout night, and that is your pitches pile up. Late in the year, Kerry Wood would like to get a couple of outs where it's a one or two pitch at bat. In this one, the outfielders could have played with no gloves. So nothing has left the infield. There's been one error that didn't leave the infield. The rest, strikeouts, ground outs. So you're saying Kerry Woods turning in a Gagne like performance? It's just an outstanding performance at this point because he's gotten most everything over the plate. I know he's walked a couple, but he's been close enough. And when he gets two strikes, You've got some problems. One ball, two strikes. Base is clear. There's number 10. And Randall will hit with the base is clear. Kerry Wood throws that tight. Breaking ball. A lot like Mark Pryor in that respect. He looks just as good backwards as he does forwards. Fastball popping at 97. Curve and slider crackling. And so far, the Reds no match for Kerry Wood. Nothing in two. the play and that 
retires the side. Wood with 10 strikeouts, no hits allowed, and a one-run lead going to the sixth. Admit it, you want a new Volkswagen, but you want to save lots of this. Then you want this guy, Big Joe for North Shore Volkswagen. That's me. North Shore Volkswagen has over 600 vehicles in stock, like this 2003 Jetta GL, fully equipped, just 17685 When you want to save this, and you want a name you can trust, you want Big Joe. That's me. She's Big Joe. And you want him at North Shore Volkswagen, Route 41 and Park Avenue West in Highland Park. fans. Bring your favorite team home year-round with Vineline, the official monthly magazine of the Chicago Cubs. Published out of the Cubs' own friendly confines, Vineline delivers expert team analysis, exclusive player features, outstanding photography, and more. Call 773-404-CUBS to order today and receive a free gift with your subscription. Rates start at just $22.95. Call 773-404-CUBS to order today. September is clearance month at your Dodge dealers. It's your chance to make zero down payments, zero payments for six months, and get 0% APR financing. Or choose generous cash allowances of up to $4,500 on 2003 models. Plus, you'll get Dodge's seven-year, 70,000-mile powertrain limited warranty. Zero in on all the savings during September clearance month. Now through September 30th, see your Dodge dealer for the best values in America. Sunday, September 28th, the first 10,000 ladies, 14 and older, get a Ryan Sandberg, your second to none. Cherish Teddy's figurine by Inesco. This is limited edition figurine. Comes with a commemorative card and is available exclusively at Wrigley Field. Compliments of NBNA. Also will retire Ron Santos number 10 jersey. We encourage you to get to the ballpark no later than 1245 to see the on-field ceremony before the 120 start with the Pirates. And look at that. Marquise Grissom has hit a home run for the Giants. They lead Houston now two to nothing in the second inning of play at Minute Maid Park. Giants go, and here's Kerry Wood looking to help the Cubs extend a one-run lead here in Cincinnati. Cub right-handers are starting to look inside, and they're starting to hit the ball a whole lot better against Randall. That one shot into center field, and it's a leadoff hit for Wood. I think if you're Don Gullett and Dave Miley, you're taking a close look at Randall this inning. I think the Cubs are going to add to their lead. And the bullpen starting to stir. You see the ball inside again. That's where Randall throws most of his pitches to the right-handers. Doesn't take long before you can adjust to that. He started out doing it early. And now with the lights a whole lot better, taking control, the hitters are starting to hit line drives. So there's Gullet. There's Dave Miley. There's Kenny Lofton in the batter's box. Lofton single to open up the game, took strike three and argued about it to end the Cub third. A Ramirez home run leading off the fifth is the only run of this game. have to hope that Randall throws something on the inner portion because they're playing Lofton as an off field hitter and there's a lot of room in right center. There hasn't been much hit to the right side of the diamond at all tonight by anybody. That's because Randall feels much more comfortable outside to left handers inside the right handers. He can control that part of the plate. He has problems with the other side of the plate. 
Two balls and a strike to Lofton. Downstairs, ball three. Runner at first. Nobody out. Cubs try to add to their lead. Former Cub Dan Serafini throwing in the pen. Scott Randall scuffling somewhat. Line right center field. That's going to get in between the gap. Carry around second. He's on his way to third. Pena up. And Wendell Kim will hold everybody with nobody out. Play for the big inning. Lofton doubles Wood to third. And now it's set up for a big six for the Cubs. I don't think Randall's going to get out of this inning. Kenny Lofton does indeed hit the ball into that gap. This ball low and away. Lofton pulls it, hits it in a perfect spot, and with nobody out, and Kerry Wood, without great speed, Randall holds him up. So Kerry nearly did the splits over at third base, and now Grantalonic a chance to put a crooked number on that board in the sixth. Second and third, nobody out. Line left center field. That's going to score two. What scores? Lofton scores. Grunzelanek a double, and it's a three-nothing game. Don Gullett might want to take a trip to the mound because Scott Randall has hit the wall, and the Cubs will continue to punish him if he stays in. Now Larue's going out there; he wants to kill a little time. Serafini has just started to throw. You can buy him about 20 extra pitches. The Cubs lead by three as they're pounding away here in the sixth inning against Scott Randall. 33 RBIs for Grotolanik. He doubles his RBI total on the road trip. Cubs by three. And now Alu will hit. center field. That's going to drop. Grotolonic's getting waved around. Friel up, throwing, up the line, safe at the plate. In the second is Alou. And the Cubs are punishing Randall here in the sixth. Well, let's hope that Dave Miley keeps him in there because I'm not sure he's going to get anybody out anytime soon. Alou drives in run number 90. The hit parade continues. Four in a row. And again, you're going to run on Brandon. You're going to run on Friel. And here comes Don Gullett. Listen to all these Cub fans in Cincinnati as Alou, with the fourth straight hit of this sixth inning, extends the lead. Never be all that comfortable, but you would think the way Kerry Wood is throwing tonight, four runs might just do the trick. It comes, however, not wanting to rest on their laurels. There's the two guys at the top. They have keyed this big rally after the base hit by Kerry Wood. And the Cubs putting the hammer down as they try to win a division for the first time since 1989. Mark try to figure out the celebratory handshake in the dugout. Here's Sosa. Sammy looks to get on the hit parade here in the sixth. Three runs on four consecutive hits. And now Reith joins Serafini in the bullpen. And now LaRue's going to go back out with a runner at second. Randall wants a new set of signs. Giants keep pounding away. They've added another run. Three nothing the score. Things shaping up pretty nicely here this evening. It comes with just as soon Philadelphia defeats Florida. They're leading three to nothing. San Francisco with a three to nothing lead and the Cubs with a four to nothing lead. Right down central for a strike to Sammy.
sung every breaking ball he's thrown this inning. Let me try to go to the high fastball, but at 88, we better hit a good spot with it. One two pitch is off the plate. And Sammy works the count even at two and two. Shot foul. Gene Clients. Hey, pretty good pickup at first. Bare hand pickup, and then he made some friends by tossing the baseball into the stands. Kendall has yet to retire a Cub this inning. They're in the heart of the order with a red hot Aramis Ramirez waiting on deck. Two and two. Routed to the right side. Nice pickup at second by Jimenez. Alou will move to third. Good at bat by Sosa to advance the runner. And with one out, Ramirez will stand in. And the Giants are pounding away as well in Houston. But in that ballpark, you cannot rest on a four-run lead, not with that Houston offense. The good thing the Cubs had going for them with the Giants late in the season, although they run away with their division, they are battling for home field advantage throughout the playoffs. That's one of the reasons why they're throwing their best and playing their best. Driven to right field, Pena on the run. He can't get that. That's off the wall. Long single for Ramirez. Scoring easily is Alou. It's a four-run six and a five-nothing game. Well, you'd have to think that that would probably be it for Randall. I didn't think he'd make it through this inning, and it appears that he won't. So they will bring on Dan Serafini, the southpaw. Randall went five innings and one third. Seven hits. Five runs to this point. He struck out two. Did not walk a single batter and gave up the home run to Ramirez. So Randall is ripped. And Dan Serafini's on here in the sixth. A special night in Cincinnati with the Cubs in front, 5 0. Need replacement windows? Feldco is the brightest idea around. But don't take our word for it. Do a little research of your own. Online, on your phone, or right in your neighborhood. Feldco customers pay significantly less for quality replacement windows. Custom manufactured and professionally installed by experts. Call for a free estimate. Feldco with showrooms north and south. Call 866 for Feldco. Two more steps, guys. Come on, Mom. We've been to the video store on the dry cleaners. I think we've been like more all day. Hardworking engines need a hardworking oil. Introducing Pennzoil's SUV truck and minivan motor oil. Not just oil, Pennzoil. Get the Pennzoil protection package at Jiffy Lube and get $10 back on your next Pennzoil service. Computer, scanner, printer, need it all. Gotta burn CDs, email goofy pictures, and definitely need a video card for games. Is that it? Well, it does it for me. <laughs> what do you guys need it to do? <laughs> Whatever you need. Circuit City is the place to save on your new computer. While supplies last, save $350 on this HP Notebook computer with DVD player and CD burner. Just $799.99 after rebates. Circuit City, we're with you. Dan Serafini on for Randall here in the sixth inning. And uh, speaking of Randall, Randall Simon will be the first Cub hitter he faces. Serafini one and three the ERA up close to six on for the seventh time four of them starts he's given up a whopping 38 hits in 24 and a third 
Also giving up five home runs in those same 24 and a third, and he inherits red hot Aramis Ramirez at first base. The Cubs have a five to nothing lead behind an overpowering Kerry Wood, who has a no hitter through five. Simon jumps on the first ball, drives that one deep to left field. Back goes Branion with room at the scoreboard. And he'll make the play. That looked like a pop up off the bat of Simon, but we told you left field is the wind tunnel in this ballpark. Two out. Cubs have hit the ball awfully well this trip through the batting order, and Randall Simon thought this one might have a chance to go. Russell Brandon, who's had a good night in left field, hauls this one in right in front of the scoreboard. Here's Alex. He's 0 for 2 tonight. One ball, no strikes. 5 nothing Giants lead in the second inning. Go Giants. Get Jason Schmidt about 10. Want to know your count? Felipe Alou did say that Jason Schmidt. This is going to be his final start of the regular season. Well, they, they've run away with it, and I know they're certainly thinking about the best record. However, if that's in doubt, they've got to fly to New York to pick up a game at the end of the year. Correct. And Felipe Alou said something that just astounded me when he said he was going to leave his A team back and send all of his extra players to New York even if that game meant home field advantage. That's somewhat surprising and some I don't think baseball like to hear very much. Two balls two strikes and the reason that game is so very important if the Giants are a half game behind Atlanta they'd have to win that game to pull into a tie with the Braves and the Giants won the head to head record with Atlanta so they in turn would get home field a game seven if necessary. And Pac Bell Park's been maybe the biggest home field advantage in all of baseball. It's somewhat a surprising response from a veteran manager who's a real good one. And is in the playoffs for the first time. Popped up to the right side and it's caught by Casey. Huge sixth inning for the Cubs. They played four. They get five hits. They lead by five with an overpowering Kerry Wood coming out for the sixth inning. Look again. Look again. Ford truck season is here, and the world's number one selling truck, the 2003 Ford F-150, now offers 0% financing for 60 months or 4,000 total cash back. Save big on a new 2003 F-150, and check out the next F-150. The truck critics are calling the best pickup ever. Ford truck season at your local Ford store. Be there. Where you been? Look again. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your deodorant is? Get Right Guard, the only one with a power stripe of extra protection. Right Guard, Hello. right to the end of the day. Comcast is working hard, so you won't miss a moment. We're working hard to bring you crystal clear pictures with digital cable. We're working hard to bring you high speed cable internet. And at Comcast, our promise is to continue bringing new technologies home to you first, to keep you in touch, informed, and in sync with everything you need to stay connected now and in the future all from one single source Comcast Hi I'm William Walker and I used to sell satellite dishes a word of advice if you're thinking about getting one don't they were going to charge me $250 for the install so I figured I'd do it myself how hard could it be I used to sell them to get a signal I had to put the dish on a pole then the wind knocked out the pitcher the disc company told me, wait, they'll come back. I got rid of the dish and got Comcast Digital Cable. Uh, I don't sell the dish anymore. After our game, it's Fifth Third Bank Cubs Post. We'll have all the highlights and analysis of our game tonight. Gail Fisher and Dave Otto, they'll have the Fifth Third Bank Cubs Post immediately after our game on Fox Sports. Next. Top of the order and a special night so far for Kerry Wood. Just two make it three Cincinnati base runners in the game. Two walks and a fielder's choice and ten Wood strikeouts through five. You got to play in at the corners. Make sure you take the butt away from Friel. 
This will be an interesting inning. Karen gets through this one. This game will start to get even more exciting. Obviously, the playoff ramifications. Looking at the six to nothing San Francisco score in the second inning. You have to say the Cubs would be in pretty good shape. Bear in mind there is a no hitter going on right here and Kerry Wood stuff seems to be somewhat enchanted here. One strike to free right down the middle. Nothing in two. First, one man down in the sixth. Get down two strikes, and you see that quick breaking slider, and you just have no chance. Nice pickup by Damian Miller, and then he completes the play at first base. Is Hummel. He's 0 for 2. He has struck out and he has grounded out. That ball on the ricochet got the umpire, Sam Holbrook. This one bounces right over Damian Miller and hits him right in the chest. 1 0 to Hummel. Driven down the right field line, but a late swing. Strike one. Hummel has pretty good swings at the fastball. He doesn't have real good swings at anything breaking. And you figure more times than not he'd take that fastball to right or right center field. High hopper. Simon leaps. Fires to first. There's out number two. I think it's that inch and a half vertical leap that really helped out Randall Simon. Turned out to be a pretty good play, and we'll watch it again. Well, it's a little more than that. I mean, once you flip up the legs on the bunny hop, it looks a whole lot more impressive. Yes, well, at the end of the play, the Cubs had the 3-1 put out. And this is the most dangerous man for Kerry Wood as he tries to navigate through his no-hit bid so far. A walk and a strikeout for Jimenez. That's upstairs. It is now 10 wow. to nothing, San Francisco. We ask for 10, we get 10. A grand slam by the Fonz. Ricardo Alfonso. And it won't be rained out in Houston, folks. They've got a long way to go against a real good baseball team, those San Francisco Giants, bidding to go 97 and 59. They long ago made a shambles of the race in the West. They're trying for the best record in the National League. 2-0. Two, oh. Two balls and a strike to the Cincinnati second baseman. Remember the Reds opened the year with Aaron Boone playing second base for them. And out of all the trades they made, a lot of people think that that might be the one that hurts this team the most. Boone is going to be a leader wherever he goes. They love having him in New York. He will be a guy that will rise to the occasion in the big games, and he's young enough and will be good enough that the Reds, although they lost a whole lot of players, probably will rue the day they traded Aaron Boone. Dangerous pitch. Grounded right side. Simon's got it on a 3 1 count. Kerry Wood, a no hitter, through six with 11 strikeouts. Comes enjoying a five run lead at the Great American Ballpark. Mortgage application. Me too. Bye. Hi. The mortgage application with 80% less paperwork from Bank of America. Higher standards. Oh. Yeah. Do me a favor. Can you? Uh, uh. Wow. <sighs> Men. McDonald's presents a feast for the eyes and stomach. 
<laughs> for a limited time only, get two delicious quarter pounder with cheese sandwiches for just two twenty-two. That's two great sandwiches at one great price. Wow. New 2004 Pontiac Grand Prix with optional driver's package has aluminum wheels, wide track handling, and the largest V6 in its class. Chicagoland, it's a rush, hour after hour. And now get a 2004 Pontiac Grand Prix with driver's package for around $229 a month with smart buy financing. Residency restrictions apply. Call for details. This is not a lease. Own your Grand Prix today. See your Chicagoland Pontiac dealer. Tonight on the best damn sports show, period. Why these Jersey boys are rocking the Philly football world. Plus, it's a family affair. Who's the best QB in the Manning family? And Ultimate Fighters Tito Ortiz and Randy Couture. Tonight, after the post game. Here's a look at our game summary. Aramis Ramirez with the early thunder, and Kerry Wood has taken it the rest of the way. Ramirez with two driven in. A shot to center, chases Friel back. He can't get it. It's over his head. Kerry Wood will gallop into second base with a leadoff double. Damian Miller, I beg your pardon, with a leadoff double. Kerry Wood's coming up now, and he singled last time up. So Miller has his 19th double of the season, and now Wood's coming up with a chance to add to this five-run lead. Well, he crushed that ball over the head of Friel. You know, you've got the big lead. Let him butt him over. I mean, I don't think you want Kerry running the bases with a no-hit bid. Man, the ballpark has given up some yardage tonight. LaRue pounces. There is the bunt. And a good play at first by Jimenez on the sacrifice. So Miller in to third. One man out, top of the order now for Kenny Lofton. And left-handers have hit Serafini just as well, if not better, than right-handers. So again, Branion and Friel don't throw very well. You don't have great speed at third in Damian Miller. But Kenny Lofton, who's had a real good night at two for three, trying to drive in run number 44. To nothing comes looking for more here. We could be looking at a one game Cub lead with five to play at the end of tonight's action in the National League Central. Kenny Lofton has seen Dan Serafini twice. He's one for two. Infield in at all four positions. Breaking ball, fly ball. Will it be deep enough? Friel sets, grabs. Here comes Wood. Here comes the throw. Close play. Carry in safely. Damian Miller. I'll get it right, I promise. Damian Miller slides in to make it six to nothing. Carry with the sacrifice and an E on the broadcaster, but it's six nothing. Cubs the lead in the seven. And they hit it to the right guy because Friel, although he does have good speed, doesn't have a good arm. Kenny Lofton delivers. Friel sets up and he gets himself in good position, but folks, either you can throw it or you can't. You can be accurate, but if you don't have a great arm, even catchers score on you. And Jason LaRue tried all he could to block off the plate with his left leg. Damian Miller got in. He's seen that play before. He's done it. Here's Gruntzelanek now. Mark has had a big night. A two-run scoring double and a run himself in that big four-run inning for the Cubs. So Wood in command in that lower portion of that line score. Looking bigger and bigger here tonight. It would appear that we're going to go into the bottom of the seventh inning and on the Cincinnati portion of the line score, there's going to be zeros all the way across. That's in for a strike. Mark taking all the way, three and one. They don't have Larson, they don't have Kearns, Dunn, Griffey. Larkin probably won't play the rest of the way. And that 
ball sharply hit. Oh, what a pick up at third. Hummel, a terrific play. And that will retire Grunzelanek and the Cubs in the seventh. Time to stretch. Damian Miller double scores on the loft and sack fly, giving that man a Easy, gang. Plenty of room. To make the ride to the game more comfortable, Chevy thought roomy Suburbans and Tahoes were just the ticket. Sit back and get comfortable. Now get $4,500 total cash back on every 2003 Chevy Tahoe. Or get $5,000 total cash back on every 2003 Chevy Suburban. Hurry, the selection won't last. Maybe this wasn't the best idea. Copy that. See your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealer today. The only love I have in my life. Jay. So don't tell me who to love. You have no idea how I feel. Excuse me. Yeah. Can I get my grown man on the one? Because I see some ladies tonight that should be hanging with Jay. Jay said. Ladies. Excuse me, miss. What's your name? Uh -huh. Can you come and hang with me? I told him I was leaving. That's a facial point. What? They're down by 10 and a half. Now they come. Excuse me. Welcome back. I'm here in this 19th century Victorian with new owners Mike and Shannon Boyd. Hi, Ted. We just fell in love with its charm. Yeah, yeah it's charming. Unfortunately, the roof leaks, the foundation is crumbling, and there's significant termite damage. But I do have good news. I just saved a bunch of money on my car insurance by switching to GEICO. Hey, we need to talk about your electrical. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, we're going to want to fix that. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Cubs baseball is brought to you in part by Comcast, proud to be Chicagoland's new cable company. Well, partner, I think you said it best right before we came back from commercial break. What a game indeed. The Cubs are trying to take a one-game lead with five games to play. They look and see 10 to nothing. The Giants on top of Houston. Here, Kerry Wood is throwing a no-hitter. The greater effort is that the Cubs are pounding the Reds. Gary Wood would obviously like any pitcher. You dream about a no hitter once in your career. He's had a one hitter where he struck out 20. He's been in control from the first pitch of the night. So Casey the man standing in the way here in the seventh. Casey reached on a first inning fielder's choice to Randall Simon with the pitcher covering leading off the Reds fourth. Right over the outside corner evens the count. You figure Casey doesn't strike out much so you'd like to make it a low pitch at bat and get by one of their best of the guys left standing for the Reds. Grounded right side. Grunzelonic from the outfield grass. Gets Casey. One down. Such has been the domination of Kerry Wood that they don't have one ball out of the infield tonight. It's all been strikeouts and ground outs. Good play by Grunzelonic as that ball went over the seam where the dirt and the grass meet, and he was able to make the play. Here's Branyan. Carey's gotten him with breaking balls twice. One ball, no strikes to Branyan. Even now at one and one. <laughs> Missed by an eyelash. Two balls and a strike. And you can hear the Cub fans umpiring along. And Ree throwing in the bullpen. Well, you figure if you're Brandon, you're going to see a fastball. Kerry Wood's going to try to throw it up and by him. Brandon 
Ryan's always been a much better low fastball hitter than a high fastball hitter. Looking at Damian Miller. There's the fastball away. Runs the count full now. And Carey got the fastball up, and with an uppercut swing, you can't do anything with it except pop it up or miss it. That one fouled straight back. We're looking at Damian again. Another high fastball. a string of 15 straight Reds hitters retired. Wood has his third base on balls now and to the stretch he'll go to face Willie Mopena. Kerry was in the stretch in the first inning after the walk in the air. He was in the stretch in the second inning. And that one does miss outside. Damian Miller did a nice job of trying to catch it without pulling it back. Willie Mopena, completely the opposite of Branyan. He can hit high fastballs. One ball, no strikes. Little tapper. Pena has a 1-1 count. This is a man that will strike out if given the opportunity. Well, he won't hit a breaking ball. He won't hit a slider or a curve. And if this no-hitter is broken up, you'd like it broken up with a clean hit, not a topper in the infield. 1-1. One, one. Uh-oh, topper on the infield. Ramirez with Pena flying down the line. It's an infield hit. I just had a feeling, I don't know, Chip. It's just that Willie Mopena runs well. He was swinging on top of the ball, and unfortunately, that's how the no-hitter comes to an end with a topper in the infield. So the crowd on its feet applauding Kerry Woods. Six innings and one-third of no-hit baseball. And now Damian Miller wisely to the mound. It's Kerry Woods' focus and concentration back on getting the W now. Yeah, there is a, there is a, a greater good here, and that is the Cubs have to win this one. You take the no-hitter into the seventh. Now it's over. Get the win. Now you go after the shutout, and you're trying to get everybody out from here. First and second, only one out. We're double play ground ball away from getting out of the inning and still not a ball has left the infield. One strike to LaRue. Now two strikes. As we've reached the nine o'clock hour here in Cincinnati. Comes with a commanding six run lead. Houston still batting in their half of the second. The Giants scored ten against them down at Minute Maid Park. Giants have won 12 of their last 13 games in Houston. Carries up over 100 pitches, but he still has terrific stuff. This is just about as good as we've seen Kerry Wood. He's had some great games over the course of his career. He's just been dominating. I don't care who's in your lineup. You go into the seventh and the ball hasn't left the infield. You're doing something. Two strikes. LaRue doesn't hack at that. Wood in his last 29 innings coming in. 35 and a third counting tonight. He's given up a grand total of four earned runs. First and second for Branyan and Pena. Two outs now for Almeida, the shortstop. And finally, they're able to hit the ball to the outfield. Took him a long time, and fortunately, that one 
didn't have a whole lot of steam on it as Moises went back and made the play. So get out of this inning. It goes right to the heart of the order in the eighth. And you start thinking about saving Kerry Woods some pitches. Shutouts aren't important. Saving his arm for the next start probably is. On Paul, no strikes to Olmedo. Houston doesn't score in the second. Giants look to add to a 10 run lead in the third. Kevin Millwood mystifying Florida in Florida. Phillies would leapfrog to a tie in the wild card. Pitching matchup for the rest of that series. Myers and Beckett in game two. Wolf and Penny in game three. Down in South Florida. Phillies have played very poorly in their last 30 road games. They've lost 21 of them. They're winning tonight. 3 0 in the seventh. Kerry reached back, got a little something extra on that fastball. And you know that. Larry Rothschild, Dusty Baker going to talk to Kerry when he comes out to see just how he feels. This is the first inning where he's shown any signs at all of having some problems. He hasn't had many, but he hasn't had any. Things still very well in hand. Pitch number 117 coming now to Olmedo. Are full now. You're going to see Stenson come on a pinch hit. You might remember the last time the Cubs saw him, he doubled in a couple of runs to left field at Wrigley Field. Larry going out there to talk with him. Had a chance to talk with Jose Rio before the game today. He has an academy. He's got a huge baseball complex in the Dominican, and they split between the Yankees and the Reds as far as funding that facility. And Jose Rio, who's told me that he had probably 30 pitching coaches, said that the best he's ever had is the man standing on the mound right now, and that's Larry Rothschild. He was a pitching coach for Jose Rio right here in Cincinnati. He said, not only mechanically, he said he was very good at that, he said, but psychologically it was the best he'd ever seen. He knew just exactly what to say at any specific time to get you over the hump. In this situation with Kerry Wood, he's probably saying, look, you took this game a long way. Let me tell you how we want to pitch to Stenson. Get out of this inning and give me the best you have. We'll probably go to that bullpen and Kyle Farnsworth. So here is Stenson. Bags full. Two out. Reds lead the major leagues in pinch hit home runs and RBIs this year. They've done a very good job. Stenson four for 11 with five driven in as a pinch hitter and the sacks are full of Reds. That's off the plate high. One ball no strikes. And Kerry wanted that one. Didn't get the call from Sam Holbrook. Stenson drives the ball well to left and left center field. Two balls, no strikes. Next pitch will be number 120. Well, now Stenson knows he's going to see a fastball, and this is a ball that he's likely to hit to left and left center if Gary throws a strike. That's where the wind tunnel is in Cincinnati. 2 0. Got it over. He took one right down the middle. You don't see many pinch hitters do that.
Two more steps, guys. Come on, Mom. We've been to the video store and the dry cleaners. I think we've been in the car all day. Hardworking engines need a hardworking oil. Introducing Pennzoil's SUV truck and minivan motor oil. Not just oil, Pennzoil. Get the Pennzoil Protection Package at Jiffy Lube and get $10 back on your next Pennzoil service. Only one place can have the largest Honda model year-end clearance in Chicagoland. The Midwest's largest volume Honda dealer, Schaumburg Honda Automobiles. More than 1,100 Accords, Civics, CRVs, and more available. 1.9 APR for 60 months. There's only one, Bob Rorman. Chicagoland's largest Honda model year-end clearance exclusively at Bob Rorman's Schaumburg Honda Automobiles. Eight blocks west of Woodfield Mall on Golf Road, Schaumburg. Officially, it's called Jack Daniels Old Time Old Number no. 7 brand quality Tennessee sour mash whiskey. But you can ask for Jack. Shining is finding new ways to do things. For over 65 years, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois has worked to ensure your health and the health of those closest to you. And every day, we're seeking ways to improve what we do. Sometimes, the things that are familiar to you can still surprise you. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois, shining through. Cubs baseball is brought to you in part by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, shining through. Stoney, here's a look at our Pennzoil protection play. Kerry Wood with a fine effort defensively kept his no hit bit alive until the Reds got a topper in the seventh inning. Wreath comes into the ball game and he's looking up at a 6 0 deficit. And Kerry Wood just was magnificent tonight. You got to figure he's done, right? I I think so. I mean, he's over 120 in pitches. There's a six to nothing lead. He does have one more start. That is, of course, if that start is a meaningful one, and who knows? All in two to Alu. I got to figure, Chip, that you take him down, you save pitches. If his start is meaningful, he gets another one. If not, they could start to set the playoff rotation, but we don't want to put the horse where it doesn't belong at this point. One and two to Moises Salu, Brian Reith in. 41st game for Cincinnati. If there has been a, a high point for the Reds, it has been the performance of their bullpen. They lead all Major League bullpens and victories. They have 36 of them this year. Alou couldn't check his swing, and he's retired on strikes, opening up the Cubs' half of the eighth. Well, that's a testament to this ball club and their propensity to come back late. They had a real good year when their team was together and everybody was healthy. Offensively, they were a real solid baseball team. But as the injuries piled up and their starters began to go on the disabled list, it's a completely different red team. Sammy Sosa the batter. Sammy looks to get on on the hitting fun tonight. He's 0 for 3 to this point. Big cut and a miss. Strike one. Marlins batting in the seventh inning, still trailing the Phillies. Three zip. Mets over the Pirates, 1 0 in the seventh. That's Al Leiter going for New York, I believe. Montreal and Atlanta scoreless in the sixth. Giants 10-0 over Houston in the third. Cardinals lead in Milwaukee 5-1 in the fifth. And Arizona and the Rockies just getting started. Bounce towards short. Clean pickup by Olmedo. Sosa's out number two. This has been about the hottest guy on the planet this road trip. And that's Aramis Ramirez. Tonight, no exception. With 
two hits and three at bats. And he got the hit parade started with a towering home run against Scott Randall. This was in the fifth, leading off. At that point, the game was nothing to nothing. That was a hanging curveball and a no doubt home run. And then in the sixth inning, the Cubs erupted for four runs on five hits. They added one more in the seventh, and that's been more than enough for Kerry tonight. By the way, looking for victory number 14 on the season. wins in 98. Then he got hurt. He had 12 wins in 2001, 12 wins last year. This would be his career high 14th win. What a staff. And he'll win 20 a few times before it's over. He's still a very young man, 26 years old. So would figure he's going to get 14 tonight. Zambrano with 13. Pryor leads the staff with 17. Matt Clement has 13. And all of those guys are going to get a crack at 14 or more. 6 0 is our score here. Bases clear, two outs in the Cubs eighth. Gord Hummel at third. One hop rocket handled cleanly. And it's three up, three down for the Cubs in the eighth inning of play. Six run Cub advantage at Cincinnati, Ohio. This is my bridge. This is my building. And this is my truck. For people that care about getting the job done right, we built the Toyota Tundra better from the ground up. No matter where life takes you, Verizon Wireless lets you stay in touch anytime. Hurry and get unlimited, that's right, unlimited night and weekend minutes to use coast to coast on the America's Choice Network. And when you act now, you can save big on select LG phones. So you can keep up with friends and family all across the country all the time. Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. Can you hear me now? Good. Sierra Extended Cab with more standard V8 horsepower than the new Ford F-150. Try as they might, they still can't catch us. Professional grade engineering. It's not more than you need, just more than you're used to. After the post game on Fox Sports Net. Welcome to this in-game update. I'm Gail Fisher inside the Fox Sports Net newsroom. Once again, let's get you updated on the two most significant games to the Cubs, the wild card race. It is still 3-0 Philly. This in the bottom of the seventh. Kevin Millwood is dealing. He's got a four-hit shutout going right now. And Houston is getting pounded by the Giants 10 to nothing. Marquise Grissom opened up a 10-run second inning with a solo shot for the Giants. So things looking good right now for the Cubs. You're right about that, Gail, and it's looking good after seven. As Kyle Farnsworth comes on for Kerry Wood. And everybody remembers the last time Kyle pitched here. He and Paul Wilson had a meeting of the bodies here at the Great American Ballpark. Well, didn't fare very well in that one. But Kyle has fared very well this year. Three and two with an ERA of 341 on for the 76th time. He's been a very busy man. In fact, the busiest out of the bullpen of all the Cubs. One ball, no 
strikes, top of the red order. Ryan Friel, line drive to third. Two pitches, one out. Here's Hummel. Hummel over for three. Tonight would be their 85th of the season. It'd be their 43rd on the road. And that has been one of the other subtle themes about this 2003 Cubs team, Steve. They go on the road, they play good, solid baseball, and they've been able to gain a lot of ground and maintain position a lot of times when they've had critical road trips on the schedule. Well, coming into this game, the Cubs' record was identical home and away. Six over each place. And they're bidding tonight to go 13 over on the season. Houston looks like they will go down to defeat for the fourth straight time. The Astros getting cold at the right time as far as the Cubs are concerned. Do the Giants have one more big victory after tonight, assuming they win this one? They will probably send Ponson to the mound tomorrow in the wrap up in Houston going into the series if you said the Giants would win two of three everybody would be very happy having probably won the first two get a little greedy you want that third one. absolutely and the Giants have done what they set out to do which is take the series from Houston in Houston a place where they've dominated the Astros one of the few teams that can possibly say that they will have beaten them 13 of the last 14 games three and one again toward third Ramirez big hop perfect throw two outs one year ago was all Cardinals and this year when they came to Wrigley Field on those games that were played the first second third and fourth split doubleheader on the second I will always believe that the Cubs took the heart out of the St. Louis Cardinals winning four of five. They came in thinking that they were a better team than the Cubs. They left at least this year knowing they weren't. And they have not been the same. As Jimenez takes a strike. And that really had been the last several years a one sided rivalry especially in St. Louis the Cubs did not and still have not had great success at Bush Stadium but for the first time in a long time the Cubs not only didn't back down from that St. Louis Cardinal ball club they gave them everything they could handle and pounded them in four or five games at all They're looking straight in the eye of a team that has won three division titles in the last six years that's the Houston Astros a team that's won together as a team this Cub team has come from divergent parts and they've won in various places but they haven't won together you learn a whole lot about yourself as a team when you play good solid teams down the stretch the Cubs have been able to do just that they haven't dominated a whole lot of teams but they've won more games this year than anybody thought they would. And winners of 67 last year. This team, dominated by pitching most of this season, has gotten just enough timely hitting to be able to, it appears at least, take a one-game lead in the division race. Two and two to D'Angelo Jimenez with the bases clear. Fly ball center field. Lofton is there, and we head to the ninth inning. Cubs shutting out the Reds. Six to nothing, your score. Well, that's the last of it. The original rugged Nissan Pathfinder. And coming soon, the new full-size Pathfinder Amato. Pathfinders, countless adventures. Those guys are killing us. Ever since they added SBC out of the SL, we just can't compete. Guys, got a change for 100? This stinks. Fine.
finally, high-speed DSL is within everyone's reach. Add SBC Yahoo DSL to your home phone service for just $29.95 a month, guaranteed. One more way, we bring it all home. Hey, baseball fans. Only Cubs.com takes you straight from the ballpark to your computer. So don't miss a second of the action. Check out Cubs.com, the only place for live baseball online. Get live games with MLB.tv and game day audio. See live stats with Cubs.com's unique game day feature. For fans who just can't get enough of the game, Cubs.com, the official site for all things baseball. The number one site for Chicago Cubs fans. This exciting Cubs finish is brought to you by New Finish, the once a year car polish. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you in part by Hyundai. When your car comes with America's best warranty, you win. Hyundai. Comcast. Proud to be Chicagoland's new cable company. And by your Chicagoland Pontiac dealers. Beautiful nights on the banks of the Ohio River. 6-0 after eight Cubs shutting out Cincinnati. And our final Bank of America tonight, Sparky Anderson. Former manager of the Big Red Machine on this date in 1984 led the Detroit Tigers to 100 plus wins and became the first manager to win 100 in both the National and the American Leagues. Juan Saros comes into the game for the eighth time. The Cubs saw him in Wrigley Field. He's a side wheeling right hander. And he's in to pick up one inning. Simon, the first man to greet him. Randall 0 for 3 on the night. And he jumps on the first pitch and skies that to left. Brannion's been busy out there. And he'll make the play one step on two. The warning track. Speaking of the Tigers, they entered play tonight 118 losses. They lead Kansas City 7 3, but the Royals threatening in the fourth tonight. Still, still a long, long way to go. Way. That was Mike Marath at 7 and 21 against one of the great stories in the American League, Jose Lima, who's 8 and 1 with Kansas City. Kansas City's trying to finish second. They've won three straight. They and the White Sox entered play tonight, tied five games behind Minnesota. Minnesota, winners of nine games in a row. So when you talk about putting together a winning streak at the perfect time, the Twins have done just that. And they're winning again tonight, 3-0 over Cleveland. White Sox trail the Yankees 1-0 in the sixth. I believe the Yankees' magic number is one to clinch the American League's East. Kansas City's gotten two more at 7-5, by the way, against the Tigers. Some amazing stat. I'm not sure exactly what it is. But I don't think the Yankees have spent a day out of first since something like July 10th on since 1997. Pretty good run of excellence for the team in the Bronx. One ball, two strikes to Alex Gonzalez. You've been around baseball and the American League. Pitched over there, obviously, with the Baltimore Orioles. What do you make of the George Steinbrenner, Joe Torre situation? It seems like reading the papers in New York that Joe Torre is finally, maybe the most patient man in all of baseball, has finally grown tired of George Steinbrenner's constant sniping at the Yankees when things for a week seemingly go wrong for him. Look, you go to New York. Take what New York has to offer in the case of Joe Torrey for a salary, it's $5 million. You make what you make in away from the field, and there's certain things you have to put up with. One is a lot of traffic, the other is George Steinbrenner. You can't have New York without either of those two things. So if you get to the point where you've made enough money and you want to go out and manage someplace else, and Joe will be able to get a job wherever he wants, most likely, for a few less dollars, by the way, than you do. And I'm not sure if he's had enough or not, but you'd have to think with the success Joe has had, he's had a lot of it, that eventually you realize that there's a more pleasant way of life somewhere. And bear in mind, Joe is from New York, so he knows all about the traffic. 
knows all about George. We'll see what, how it plays out at the end of the year. Two balls and a strike. As great a job as Joe Torre has done with the Yankees, it's hard to imagine him not being the manager in New York. That's how integral he has been in their success. And we're not saying that he won't be, but you just read the paper from time to time out of New York and you wonder how long Joe can, can stand it. Ground ball toward third. Damian Miller ends the top of the ninth inning. Three more to get for the Cubs and they will have sole possession of first place by a half game on a chilly night here in Cincinnati. If you're thinking about a new garage, this could be the time. Now you can own a Danley, the world's finest quality garage, and get a garage door opener free with two remote controls. Just call 773 Garages right now. Call 773 Garages right now and get a free garage door opener and two remote controls with the Danley garage of your choice. But don't wait too long. Danley's garage door Depend on Danley. We're gonna drive on down the road. All I wanna do is drive. There's a lot of things to see in life, and you can trust this. Tire Company to take you there. They carry the world's best brands like Michelin, BF Goodrich, and Uniroyal. And their quality of service shows why customer satisfaction is still number one. So come drive through life with Discount Tire Company. All I want to do is drive. Discount Tire Company, let's drive. I love to run, and uh, it's not a problem. The hair goes with me when I run. I would always wear a hat, even in the pool. My tennis game has improved. I don't know, it just feels like I'm always acing the guy. Hello, I'm Dr. John Parker. Hair loss is an all too common problem, but finally there's good news. The Parker solution to hair loss? No, I just saved a bunch of money on my car insurance by switching to GEICO. GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. of Chicago Cubs baseball on Fox Sports. That is Bob Albrecht. This game has been directed by the Dave Turner. The associate producer is Joe Corneo. Our production manager is Moheen Ramsey, our pal from Puerto Rico. The executive producer is Josh Wine. And of course, our vice president of programming needs no introduction. So Mike Remlinger will go to the mound and tune things up here in the ninth inning. Casey, Branyan, and Pena, the scheduled hitters for the Reds tonight. The amazing story for Kerry Woods, seven innings, one infield hit. He allowed one ball hit out of the infield. Kyle Farnsworth allowed one fly ball. That's it for the Reds' attack tonight. That's how dominating the Cubs' pitching was in this ballgame. Mike Remlinger comes out for the 71st time. He'll go through the middle of the order. This is obviously a depleted Reds team, but this is a team that's beaten some good teams in the last three or four weeks. Tonight it's been all Cubs. So good Gary start. Wood trying to get a career high 14th win. It looks like things are well in hand for that. The Marlins have tied the Phillies 3 to 3. That game in the bottom of the seventh inning. Jeff Conine has hit a home run. What a pickup he was. Remember when Mike Lowell went down, the Marlins went back and got Conine from the Baltimore Orioles. And they think they're going to get Lowell back for the final game or two. And that's what he said. He said he's, he wants to come back. If they get him back for the final game or two, and they have a good series against Philadelphia. Remember, Philadelphia has to play Atlanta. Well, Florida, I believe, plays the Mets. It's a big advantage for Florida, especially if they win at least two of three in this series. Two strikes to Casey, and that's high and tight. Marquise Grissom and Edgardo Alfonso have homered for San Francisco. The Astros have one hit through four in that ball game. Casey. Yanks that foul and on the ricochet the ball travels into a short right field. Montreal and Atlanta no score in the Braves half of the seventh. Javier Vasquez has thrown a two hitter to this point. He is some pitcher folks. One of the best in the league that you haven't heard a whole lot about. 
Ground ball, two strikes to Sean Casey. Over but a little low. It evens it up. Cardinals five, Milwaukee one. Mike Matheny is homered for St. Louis. Brady Clark for Milwaukee. Colorado got four in the first against Brandon Webb. Larry Walker is hit a home run. Sinker doesn't sink quite so well in the mile high altitude, does it? And sinker bowlers have problems in the first two, couple innings. Nice size crowd here tonight. 26,124. A lot of them from Chicago. And if you take a look around, Chip, you'll see a whole lot of blue in the seats. Most of the Reds fans have found warmer places to be. The Cub fans hanging around to see that final out. Two and two. Popped up right side. Will that stay in play for Simon? The answer is no. There are a lot of tickets available for the final two games of this road portion of the season. And I would imagine, Stoney, that after tonight's performance, a few more fans from Chicago might consider playing hooky and come on down to Cincinnati. Another night game. If you can't make it here, we've got it on Fox at 6 o'clock. Paul will pitch for the Reds. All indications are Sean Estes will get the ball for the Cubs. The 2-2. Casey dumps that ball into left. And there's the second Cincinnati hit. Lead off ninth inning hit for the Red first baseman. And it brings up Branion, the left fielder. That's the matchup tomorrow. You might remember Paul. A real good outing against the Cubs. And Sean Estes will be trying to get back at his old teammates. Here's Branion, two strikeouts and a walk in tonight's game. Toward first. Simon backhand stab foul ball. Paul Schreiber, the first base umpire, made the call immediately. And back to first will go Sean Casey. Nice effort by Randall Simon. It's on the other side of the bag and doesn't pass over the bag in fair territory. Are you as surprised as I am at how well Simon has played over there? He's done a real nice job. No balls and a strike. Over but low. I didn't know how flexible he was, but he stretches well. It's pretty good range at first. And all things considered, well, Mike. he's done a nice job, as have all the guys acquired from the Pirates. He's been aggressive, too, in making that throw from first to second base. He's made that very accurately this year with the Cubs blue on. One on, nobody out in the ninth inning. A ball and two strikes to Russell Branion. because he doesn't hit ground balls. That would have been just the second in 157 at bats. But right there, that little hesitation cost the double play. Be a little more concerned if the game was closer. What an amazing game. That same play 100 years ago. A guy still safe at first. No, it's just remarkable. And the same thing with the distance of the mound from home plate. It's been 60 feet, 6 inches, seemingly forever. The base is 90 feet. And even though the guys today are bigger, stronger, and faster, and quicker than they've ever been before, if you field the ball cleanly at shortstop, get rid of it, you'll still get that man by at least one step at first. That's been that way since they invented the game. 
Two balls, no strikes to Willie Bo Pena. Cub fans, great time to follow the Cubs with a subscription to Fine Line, the Cubs monthly magazine, for team analysis and behind the scenes features to coverage of the pennant race. Fine Line delivers it all. Get it by phone at 773 404 Cubs. Order Fine Line online at Cubs.com. No strikes to Willie Mopena. His Baltimore chop off home plate was the only hit Kerry Wood allowed in seven innings today. And the Marlins have taken the lead over the Phillies in the seventh. Four to three, they have come back. Well, Philadelphia has had very little of any luck in Florida. They got off to a three run lead behind Kevin Millwood. And they couldn't hold it, at least for the moment. And the Phillies' road woes continue. And that's ball four. Two men are on with one man out. And now with the runner at second base, Remlinger and Miller go over the signs, and Larry Rothschild to the mound. Francisco Giants put a 10 spot on the board in the second in Houston. Jason Schmidt is in the bottom of the fifth inning, allowing only one Houston hit. We saw Schmidt this year a couple of times, and he looked like a different guy from the previous years. He has a lot more confidence. He's always been overpowering with his fastball. Now he's getting everything else over the plate. And before it's over for the Cubs this year, they just might see him again. Here's LaRue. You might recall when we saw the giant right-hander. He made his first start against the Cubs right after his mother passed away. And he has pitched inspired baseball all season long. And I would imagine he won't win the Cy Young Award in the National League, but he's going to get a whole lot of attention with the year he's put together for Felipe Alou out there. strike to Jason LaRue. Well, the path of the Cubs and the Giants have come together a couple of different times. Everybody remembers 1989 and I'm sure everybody remembers 1998. Before this one is over they just might hook up again. That's over the outside corner and I think everybody remembers earlier this season when the Cubs went out there took two of three at Pac Bell Park. There aren't too many National League teams that can boast of that accomplishment this year as the Giants have been Giants at home. A whopping 54 and 23 record on their home turf. That's up the middle. Flip to second one. Turn to first two. And the Cubs are in first place. Six to nothing. The final score on a brisk night in Cincinnati, Ohio. Kerry Wood was in a word magnificent. The Cubs scored a run in the fifth. They put it away in the sixth. And Kerry Wood with just one little skinny base hit chopped off the plate by Willie Mopena was all he gave up. A career high 14th win. The Cubs have come to Cincinnati to do what they had to do win the first game. They look at the board they see Houston trailing 10 to nothing and it would appear at least for the moment that the Cubs are going to take a one game lead. It's a half game lead pending the outcome of a game where the Giants are killing the Astros and the magic number for the division championship to six. If Houston loses it goes to five. But right now Chicago you're in first place in the National League Central six nothing the final score in Cincinnati Ohio Gale and Dave. Should be a fun post game show, I think. Oh, absolutely. 
the Cubs came to play and so did we. We are here to break it down in the postgame show. Dusty Baker joins us live to talk about Kerry Wood's fine performance. He was pure dominance. And we'll compare and contrast the Kerry Wood of 98 to the Kerry Wood of 2003. You might be surprised by the difference. And the Giants are doing the Cubs a giant favor. Highlights from Minute Maid Park on the way. But first, let's send it back to Chip and Cincy. Stoney, final thoughts in this one. Just two hits. Kerry Wood, a career high in wins. 12 strikeouts, one hit allowed. And the Cub offense explodes for four in the sixth inning tonight. The Cubs have a 1-1A one one starter. You can take your choice. Mark Pryor, Kerry Wood, you send them both to the mound in games you have to win. And that's exactly what both of them did. The Cubs needed the finale in Pittsburgh. They needed the debut here in Cincinnati. They got them both behind Pryor. And tonight, Kerry Wood was absolutely dominating from the first pitch on. He had exploding stuff, and he just completely handcuffed the Reds. And assuming San Francisco is going to hang on to their big lead, the Cubs now do, with five games left, firmly hold the future within their own hands and need no other help. They had it before this game. If they went undefeated, there was no way that Houston could win. Same thing holds true, except with a one-game lead, there's a little room for error. I don't think the Cubs are looking for that, however. Amen, brother. 6-0 again is our final score from the Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati, Ohio. Kerry Wood, the winner, now 14-11. and 11. Randall, the loser, he falls to 2-4 and four at a crowd of 26,124 on hand. Cubs 6-0, your final score for Steve Stone and our entire crew. Chip Carey from the ballpark in Cincinnati inviting you to stay tuned. Gail and Dave are standing by with the fifth third Cubs postgame show. That's coming up next. My parents just bought the only minivan to get a five-star safety rating since I was...